right, well, I'm here, to, I'm here today to, uh, to attack the false doctrine of evolution. And what do I mean by evolution? I mean the theory that everything came from nothing, randomly, accidentally, over the course of billions and trillions and squillions of years. And this covers the cosmos, the chemicals, stars, planets and organic matter, not to mention all of the known laws of physics. The theory of evolution is that this whole thing called life is just one big coincidence. And that's evolution in a nutshell. Evolutionists are coincidence theorists. And the main reason that I do not believe in evolution is because it is not supported by scripture. 1 Timothy 6 chapter, uh, chapter 6 verse 20 says this, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. You see, real science, real science, is testable, repeatable and observable. And evolution is none of those things. And this is coming from somebody who used to believe in evolution. And here are the five reasons that evolution is one of the greatest frauds of all time. And it's up there with the modern Bible versions, climate change, the Big Bang, the JFK assassination, COVID and the moon landings, amongst other things. And now that I've already offended 99% of the population, let's uh, get into it and make lots more friends, shall we? Reason one is the missing links. There are no transformational species found in the fossil records. There are no missing links. And this is by far the largest flaw in evolutionary theory. For every sequence of evolutionary advancement along the line of species, we should find countless, if not millions and millions of fossils that are half algae, half fish, half fish, half mammal, and so on and so forth. And yet none of these fossils have ever been found despite scouring the fossil records. No monkeys or lemurs in the supposed line of man's descent have ever been found. The fossils simply do not exist. Evolutionists use their imagination to fill in the gaps. Also, there is practically nothing about a skeleton to indicate the body lines of the animal that owned it. It is all speculation. I mean, scientists have filled in so many gaps to support evolution that they cannot determine fact from fiction. Carefully placing human and monkey bones next to each other behind museum glass doesn't validate evolutionary sequencing. There have been numerous fossil frauds documented down through the years where man has tried to authenticate evolution's existence using the bones of pigs or monkeys. And this includes the infamous Piltdown Man, a hoax, Lucy, a hoax, and Java Man, Another hoax. Read up on these things. Charles Darwin never found any transitional fossils. Instead, he assumed that they would turn up in the years to come, if you read his works. And they never did. Other famous scientists you ought to read up on include Dr Colin Patterson, Stephen Jay Gould, Stephen M. Stanley and Professor William Bateson, to name but a few. These were honest men. And a lot of them spent their whole lives in paleontology. They could not find a single transitional fossil. Reason number two. Think about this question. Why are there only two kingdoms of life? Why are there only two kingdoms of life? You see, in biology, you have two kingdoms. The first kingdom, if you study biology, is the animal kingdom. And the second kingdom is the vegetable kingdom. And at some point in history... If evolution is indeed true, these two kingdoms decoupled from each other and split into two groups. How does evolution explain this? Why are there only two kingdoms? Why not millions and millions of different kingdoms of life? Why is there a gap between the two? And where did this come from? And not only that, but why does man stand separate from the rest of creation? Why is it that only man has to put clothes on, man communicates through words and written language, manufactures things, goes to war? How come the rest of nature does not follow this pattern of man's behaviour? What makes him separate from the rest of this world? Without the book of Genesis, you have no answers for this. It doesn't make any sense. The third reason 
is the statistical impossibility and improbability of evolution. I mean, imagine setting off a bomb in a scrapyard and all of the parts land perfectly together and form a Volkswagen Golf. Imagine throwing a whole load of cogs and pieces in the air and it landing, making a perfect Rolex watch on the floor down there. The odds of that happening are vastly, incredibly so, more believable than everything coming from nothing randomly over squillions and trillions and billions of years. But what about getting 200 monkeys in a room with a load of typewriters and having them type all of Shakespeare's works fully and without error if they had over a trillion attempts to do so? Would you put your money on the monkeys doing that? The odds alone are utterly ridiculous and, let's be honest, impossible. Reason four is the ridiculousness of the survival of the fittest. The ridiculousness of the survival of the fittest. So in Darwin's system, only the strong get to breed and survive. That is what he theorises if you read his works. The weak die out and do not get to breed. According to evolutionary biology, the purpose of any living organism is to reproduce and to pass on its genetic information down to the next generation. And on and on and on this process goes. And this is further verified by even the writings of the French evolutionist Lamarck. You see, if survival of the fittest is indeed true, why is it that the house cat survives today and the dinosaurs are no longer around? Which one is the mightier species? Why has the pigeon outlived the saber-toothed tiger? Why has the grey squirrel outlived the woolly mammoth? It doesn't make any sense. And if evolution is indeed true, how do you explain sodomy and all of the other unnatural sexual behaviours that are contrary to normal reproduction and don't lead to the production of offspring and the passing on of genetic information to the next generation? Where do these tendencies come from? According to evolutionary philosophy, they shouldn't exist. Why haven't these genetic dead ends died out? And the fifth reason is the violations of the laws of science. Listen to this. Here's a question for you. How can life come from non-living matter? How can the organic spring forth from the inorganic? How can life come from something that is inanimate? It is not possible. How do you explain the origins of matter and energy when you cannot create either of these things from scratch today? Energy and matter cannot be destroyed. That is what you were taught in physics. So how do you create this from nothing, from scratch? You can't answer this if you are an atheistic evolutionist. You simply can't. Nobody has ever created life from non-life in a science laboratory. It cannot be done. They answer this with the Big Bang Theory, i.e. everything exploded randomly out of nothing, or indeed there is now a new explanation called uh, panspermia. What does that mean? Panspermia is the theory that ancient aliens visited the Earth and with an intergalactic chemistry set made life suddenly appear uh, uh, when beforehand there was nothing but rocks. You get that from watching documentaries at two in the morning about aliens building pyramids on the History Channel. It's bunk. It doesn't make any sense at all. And even if you go down that line of thought, who made the aliens? Where did they come from? It still doesn't make any sense at all. And there is so much more that could be said concerning the scriptures, DNA, the irrefutable evidences of, of the flood, and, and much more things. But that's all I've got time for today. So why did they lie? Where did this thing come from? Evolution, Darwinism. Well, let's look at the motive, shall we, very quickly. You see, evolution was propagated originally by the pagan ancient Greeks like Aristotle as their ways of explaining where mankind came from. It's nothing new. And years later, this ancient form of paganism has been resurrected, and now it's the atheistic answer to the origins of life. The communist movement clings on to evolution as their creation story, as part of their antichrist philosophical religion, whereby people worship the state. Remember when people were stood outside in this country banging their pots and pans and worshipping a certain three-letter branch of the British government? Do you see the parallels? The Jesuits, the secret military order of the Roman Catholic Church, have been deeply involved with this lie. 
Firstly, you have Georges Lemaitre in 1933, a Jesuit who theorised that the universe was created by a cosmic egg exploding. This is what you get taught at school, the Big Bang Theory. Again, is there any supporting chapters and verses on this theory found in Scripture? Of course there isn't. Then you have the Jesuit Pierre, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, who is involved with the Piltdown hoax, where they, along with the British Museum, get that the British Museum, were involved in a conspiracy to fake a transitional fossil and to generate further proof for evolution. You see, this is all part of the Counter-Reformation, a movement that has been ongoing for the past 500 years of history, when, if you know your church history, the masses were allowed for the first time to read the scriptures in their own language, so the Roman Catholic Church fought back against this, against men like Martin Luther and William Tyndale, and they waged war ceaselessly on the Protestant nations that were born out of the Reformation. This counter-reformation is where Mystery Babylon, the great whore that sits on seven hills, the Roman Catholic Church got people to dump their Bibles if they hadn't already swapped them out for their new uh, Chrome, Jerome's, Latin Vulgate, West Cotton Hort, Greek text-derived, Vatican-derived and overseen Bible versions that are full of blasphemy and attacks on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, all that to say this, when you get people away from the Scriptures, they are easily duped and controlled, and these people will be putty in the hands of the coming Antichrist when he finally appears. Unfortunately, this was an overwhelmingly successful enterprise, and it worked marvellously in the 20th century, and the Protestant Reformation was effectively brought to an end. And now we have the world as we know it in 2024. We live in an atheistic, paganistic, godless Western civilization that used to be Protestant and Bible reading, and now that God is out of the picture in politics, education and everyday life, for most people, the restraints are off and it's a race to the bottom. Anything goes. It's all well, there is no hell. Do what thou wilt. This is the religion of England today. And by espousing this anti-Bible creation story, you give people the justification they need to do away with the Bible and carry on in sin. You rid mankind of their accountability to God. You permit people to do all manner of sin and you allow people to be treated like animals, cattle, products, human resources that you can use and abuse. And this is the world we live in today, which is based upon layer after layer of satanic lies. Evolution is simply one of those many layers.